In this tutorial, we're just going to go over Rose theorem. So what is it? So a basic idea is when you have a function of f of x, for Rose theorem to apply, or what it states is that, given that the function is continuous on an interval a, b, so that's the first condition to Rose theorem, so a function should be continuous on the closed interval a and b. And then the other condition is that the function should be differentiable on an open interval A and B. Of course, we do understand what this means. For the closed interval, it implies that A and B are also applicable. And then if we talk about an open interval, it implies we're just interested in the range between A and B. And of course, the third condition is that the function of A should be equivalent to the function of B. And if all these three conditions are satisfied, Rose's theorem tells us to say that they should be, so they should be f of f prime of c, which should be equal to zero. Which this tells us, what this tells us is they should be a point c on a graph. If you differentiate it, it's going to give you what? Zero. Or they should be a point c in between a and b, which has got a derivative of zero. So what does that mean on a graph? Let's try to go to a graph and see what that means. So the basic idea is if this is your graph, okay, and then you have let's say a polynomial function that is in this form. Okay, let's say this is something that you have, the basic form of your function. So if you look at this function, let's say this is f of x. Does Rose's theorem apply to this function? So our first condition is, if you're talking about that function, let's say on the range, uh, let's let this be our A, and then this be our B. Okay, so let's say somewhere there. So f of uh, A is basically somewhere there, and then that is also f of B. Okay, of course, let's, let me move this a bit so that it matches up. Okay. So let's say B is somewhere straight down there, B. And then of course this is our A. So as you can clearly see is we are able to see that the function of A is equal to a function of B. That's the first condition. This is like the third condition is supposed to be satisfied. Now the first condition is that the function is supposed to be continuous on the interval A and B, closed interval. So in this case, if you look at this function, we can clearly see that it's continuous. And of course, by continuous, it means there is no part of the function where we expect it not to exist. And of course, that leads us to things like asymptotes, uh, discontinuous functions, especially if you're talking about piecewise functions. We've seen functions where, let's say, uh, you draw a function, and then maybe there's a point where it is, there is a dot there. Or maybe we are disconnected to such functions, maybe something like this. So such functions, in a case where you talk about the range, let's say, if this was our A and then our B, Rose theorem cannot apply. Why? Because it is discontinuous at that point. So now, this polynomial function that we have is different from such a function. So the first condition is met because it's continuous on the interval A and B. As we can see, it's continuous. It's existing between A and B, continuously. And then, of course, the third condition, which is supposed to be differentiable on an open interval A and B. Okay, so polynomial functions are differentiable completely. Okay, that's the basic idea. Unless you get to talk about absolute value functions, that's where you see that there will be some points where you will not be able to, to differentiate. So for all polynomial functions, it's differentiable continuously. As we can see, you're able to differentiate this function at any given point. Okay, so that is our second condition which has also been met. And then the third condition is that the function of A and the function of B should also be equivalent. So as we've demonstrated there, if you look at A and B, these uh, their functions are, are equivalent because their y value is the same. Now, if all these three conditions are met, according to Rose theorem, it tells us to say that there should be a point C where the derivative is equal to what? To zero. So in such a case, what we're trying to talk about is that point there. So is that point where a function is expected to what? to have a derivative of 0. So of course the derivative of any given function can also be written as 
f prime. So when we say f prime, that means we are talking about the derivative now at a certain point which we are calling c it should be equal to zero. It's very very simple. All we are saying is there should be a point c in between a and b where we need to expect our derivative our dy dx to be equal to zero. This is just what Rose theorem is telling us. That's what it is telling us. And of course, this becomes different if I was to change that part and then draw something like this. So if you look at that function, you don't expect to have f of f prime to be equal to zero at that point because it's a sharp change. Yeah. So in this case, Rose theorem may not apply because this is not differentiable at that point. Okay. So it's not possible that we have a point where we expect the derivative to be equal to zero. So Rose theorem applies to functions continuously on an open interval and also so differentiable on an open interval and then continuous on the closed interval a and b and then we have a point where the function of a and also the function of b are equivalent and then of course we can just uh, have a look at one example and see if rose theorem does apply to that given function and this is why is equal to x squared plus 2 and of course, in this case, we we'll talk about uh, an interval negative 2 and up to 2. So feel free to pause the video and just try out this to see if Rose theorem is going to apply. So our first condition is we need to make sure that it's continuous on the interval A and B. Now, the fact that this is a polynomial function, there's no doubt. We don't expect anything to make this function undefined at any given value of x. So therefore, this function is obviously going to be continuous on the interval negative 2 and 2. So the first condition, where we're saying it should should be continuous on the closed interval A and B. So that is already met. And then the second condition is uh, it should be differentiable when you look at the interval, an open interval A and B, which is also true because we are able to find the derivative of this function at any given point between negative 2 and 2. So that is also met because the polynomial function. And then the third condition is that a function of A should be equal to a function of B. So we can start with A, in this case, which is negative 2. And that requires you to substitute in the given function. So we'll have negative 2 squared plus 2. So negative 2 squared, that is a 4 plus 2, gives us a 6. And then you can go to f of 2, which will also be 2 squared plus 2, which is also going to give us a 6. So this tells us to say that f of negative 2 is equal to f of 2. So that is our third condition, which is also now at satisfied. So in this case, what are we saying? So we are, can conclude to say Rose theorem is what? Is basically satisfied. And therefore, it tells us so that there should be a certain point where we do expect the derivative to basically be equal to 0. And we can actually even apply that. So we do expect this function to have a derivative on a certain point C to be equal to 0. And of course, looking at the de derivative of this function, what do you expect to have? So y prime, or I can call it y prime or f prime if you want. So you can say y prime is therefore going to be equal to 2x. So we do expect that there is a point where this is expected to be equal to 0. And of course, if you try to do that, you are basically going to find your c to be equal to 0. And of course, 0 is between negative 2 and 0. So that tells us that it basically gives us that basic idea to say there is this point where we expect our function to have a derivative being equal to 0. And this is all about uh, Rho's theorem. Just three things that you need to understand. And I'll repeat. First thing is the function is supposed to be continuous on a closed interval of two numbers a and b so it should be continuous to start with and then the second condition is that the function is supposed to be differentiable on an open interval a and b so you're supposed to differentiate that function you should be able to determine the derivative between a and b and of course the third condition is the function of a should be equal to the function of b and if all these are met Rose theorem tells us to say that there should be a point C where we expect the derivative of that function to be equal to zero. And of course, we've given an example on uh, a quadratic function. Okay, so if there are these two points, 
a and b where the function is basically equivalent at these two points there should be a point c where we expect the derivative to be equal to zero and we're calling that point to be c that's what rose theorem is all about so thank you very much for for watching subscribe for more videos